Hello, everyone. I'm Coach. The content of this episode is based on an official document of IRCC. The purpose is to unravel and review perspective of the study permit approval. Before going further, please help subscribe to the Coach Education channel. Leave a comment, give like, and share with friends, so this channel can continue to grow. Thank you for your support. I'm proud to share that all the applications for study permit that we have assisted have never failed. It is truly a blessing. This includes many of which were resubmissions, even second or third applications, and were still successful. Coach is proud to boast its record of never having any experience failure. We strive to maintain our track record of a hundred percent success. So, what is Coach's secret weapon? Well, there is a well-known saying: "Know yourself and know your enemy, and you shall win every battle." That is being able to examine the applicant's eligibility and admissibility from the IRCC perspective. As Coach have mentioned many times before, we are living in an age of information, so knowledge is the ultimate power. And the power of knowledge can actually be mastered by all of us. Of course, this requires a basis on factual knowledge, not just self-promotional talk and hot air. The content of this episode is entirely derived from the policy procedures and guidance used by IRCC staff. It's not from coach personal opinion or interpretations. Therefore, there should be no disagreement as the content is entirely from IRCC. So, IRCC stands for Immigration, Refugees, and Citizenship Canada. The first paragraph of the document focuses on the core concern, which is the applicant's connection to their country of origin. Is it enough to ensure that they have the motivation to return? As the study permit is a temporary residence visa, they should leave Canada when the visa expires. If the applicant's motivation does not meet the standard of temporary residence, it is enough to justify a refusal. Once the student graduated in Canada, is there enough motivation to return to the country of origin? The document mentions dual or eventual intent, such as when the applicant have applied for other immigration routes. For Stream A, the eventual intent is to apply for permanent residence, that is, we call it PR, after completing their studies. Many people have great confusion over this concept. The document clearly states that dual or eventual intent does not conflict with each other. Still, it must be clearly stated that a student visa applicant intend to leave Canada after completing their studies. The document lists out twelve questions, which are the qualification verification questions that immigration officers must ask when reviewing an application. In this episode, Coach will go through with you each of these questions one by one, demonstrating the view of IRCC. So overall, there are three areas of concern. The first one is purpose and duration of trip. What is the purpose of your trip? Considerations. What will this person be doing in Canada? What is the applicant's plan for visiting Canada? Are these plans well thought out or impulsive? Additional information: If the applicant is interviewed, confirm the stated reason for travel on the application form. Although not all visitors to Canada have detailed plans, they should usually have some understanding of what they will be doing. The reason for the failure is that many people do not know the content of the program they are studying and their future career prospect. Although this seems like a straightforward and reasonable request, unfortunately, many letters of explanation are superficial and full of errors. It turns out that many applicants have a misconstrued understanding and lack of awareness or interest in the program they will be pursuing. How long will you be staying in Canada? What is the duration of the visit? Is there a limit on the time requested? Is it indefinite? Considering the situation of the applicant in his or her own country, 
and the purpose of this trip? Is the time request reasonable, plausible, practical? The second factor to consider is the connections with Canada or the country one is living in. This is what we call ties. What ties do you have with Canada? Things to consider: Who invited the person to Canada? Is there proof of an invitation? So, for study permits, this is the offer letter from the school. Does the person have family in Canada? If so, what is their immigration status in Canada? What ties do you have with your country of residence? Things to consider are: Is the person employed? Salary, position. Applicant's employer approved the request for leave. What family does the person have in the country of residence? Where are they at the time of the application? Does the person have property? What is the value of their property? What ties do you have with your country of residence? Other things to consider include: What financial obligation is the person leaving behind? What is the nature and value of these obligations? Other responsibilities? How will they be discharged? Is travel consistent with local customs and practices? Has the person traveled before? Has he overstayed in other countries? Thirdly, considerations are given to documents and financial support. Does the applicant possess a valid travel document? This mainly involves the expiration date of the travel document. Applicants often take it for granted that the passport has not expired. In fact, many times the visa date is limited to the expiration date of the passport, so it is advisable to apply for a new passport in advance to avoid affecting the permit validity period. How will you support yourself in Canada? Things to consider: Does the applicant have the means to be self-supporting, or is someone else willing and able to provide adequate support? What is the source of funds? Foreign nationals must have enough funds to maintain themselves in Canada without resorting to illegal employment or social assistance. Some applicants have indicated that they would like to take part-time jobs during their studies. Although a study permit is eligible for working, applicants should be able to provide sufficient financial proof during the application stage, and not rely on part-time jobs in their studies. Will you be able to leave Canada? Things to consider: Does the person have the financial ability to return, such as airplane ticket, money, or a statement of bank assets? The eighth question is: Do you intend to work or study in Canada? Things to consider: Does the client has a valid work or study permit? Most foreign nationals who study in Canada must have their work or study permit approved before leaving Canada. It is essential to obtain approval before arriving. So it you can consult IRCC for eleven categories of individuals who are eligible to apply for a study permit from outside Canada. Any rumors of applying for a study permit from within Canada being easier are completely absurd. IRCC's consistent standard is to act as a gatekeeper to deny entry for those who do not meet the requirements. So why would they open the door and encourage people without visa to enter the country to apply for one? To be ignorant and take a chance by purposefully entering Canada to apply for a visa would be a foolish decision. On the bottom of this page is the official link, clearly listing the twelve. Uh, Eleven categories of identity that meets the inland application eligibility. Question nine: Have you ever been convicted of a criminal offence? Is the person described under the criminality section of the Act? Is the person described under the securities provision of the Act? Has the person provided biometric information? And if so, what are the results of the biometric checks? At the bottom of this page, relevant laws are listed for reference. Please check your situation. Question ten: Do you suffer from a serious medical condition? 
things to consider is: Does the person meet the medical requirement under R30? Have you ever been refused a temporary residence visa to travel to Canada? The answer will help IRCC determine if this person has an intention of obtaining a temporary visa, as well as serve as a requirement to determine if they have answered truthfully. A straightforward questions often test the applicant's integrity. Many people forget that we are living in an information age, where all records are completely held in IRCC's database, and any false statement will only lead to much deeper trouble. Question twelve: Were you ever removed from Canada or any other country? Things to consider: Has the person provided? Biometric information, and if so, what are the results of the biometric checks? Biometric information has a validity of ten years. So, what are the key takeaways in this episode? We have reviewed the official eligibility criteria and the admissibility consideration of IRCC. It has four main criteria. First one: intent to remain in Canada illegally. Number two, purpose and duration of the trip, ties to Canada or country of residence, documents and financial support. There are twelve questions introduced above, and are all aiming to identify whether the applicant meets the requirement of the visa in these four aspects. In other words, if the review requirements are met, the visa will be approved. The message that Coach brings up here is that the standards for visa approval are very clear, and the applicant should not guess, speculate, or even criticize IRCC for working according to their moods. These views are only from applicants who are ignorant of the official review system and requirements. Amidst the multitude of differing opinions and the confusion, I believe it is caused by the applicants' ineligibility to comprehend and express their own intent, a craving for shortcuts to outsmart the system. In conclusion, there are two constructive recommendations from Coach. They are: to demonstrate truthfulness, you should provide factual support and personalized narrative. Also, to demonstrate tactfulness in your application strategy and make sound judgment, also reasonable arguments. Successful study permit is based on luck. No, coach does not believe that at all. Rather, coach believes that success in obtaining a study permit requires a combination of effort, skills, and preparation. So we should always hold a grand vision and strive to make it a reality. That is, work hard, dream big. This episode has unlocked the review perspective of the Canadian study permit approval according to the IRCC official document. We would like to take this opportunity to remind everyone to help subscribe to the Coach Education Channel. Please leave comment, give likes, and share with friends so that this channel can continue to grow. Thank you for your support.